Lord. Amen. He's able. The text that we're coming from. Mm. Goes right in hand in hand with the theme for today. Coming from third chapter of Ephesians. I will start at verse 14. And it reads. Let me know when you have it by saying amen. If you would please stand to your feet so that we can reverence the word of God. Amen. All over this house, if you're able body, if you're able to stand, please rise to your feet. There's somebody that wish they could stand. Amen. Amen. Don't take the blessing for granted. Amen. And the word of God reads. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints. What is breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Ah, strengthening the inner man. I have to ask, who, who came up with the theme, Doc? Okay, the men. Amen. Let me tell you, y'all uh, really put a chore and a task on me. I wrestled with this thing. I wrestled, amen? Because I come to the realization the more that I read this and the more that I studied it, this is not a word that everyone will fully understand or grasp. Mm. Here we are in this chapter where Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus and believers everywhere, this was during the time of his imprisonment in Rome. Uh, the letter was written with the purpose of strengthening believers in their Christian faith by explaining the nature of and the purpose of the church, the body of Christ. This was Paul's second prayer in the book of Ephesians. His first prayer for those theologians and individuals who are very familiar with this book, it was all based and placed on enlightenment. But this one was placed on enablement. Uh, it was not so much a matter of knowing as opposed to being. It's one thing to know, but then it's another thing to be. Uh, laying our hands on what God has for us and by faith making it a vital part of our lives. In essence, Paul was saying, I want you to get your hands on your wealth. I want you to understand what God has in store for you. Then I want you to realize how vast it is and then I want you to start to use it. This is what we refer to as a prison prayer. Amen. Sometimes when you're bound and you're locked up, you start thinking about some things. Amen. Ah, but he's dealing with the spiritual condition of the inner man, not dealing with the material needs of the body. Sometimes we get caught up on the material stuff. And we just kind of don't really tend to the spiritual. Uh, especially as men, you know, since we're thinking about men's day here, a lot of times we focus on the material things. Being the provider of our families and making sure that our families have what they need and making sure the lights stay on, amen? At least a good man, amen? I know it's some that sit back and they don't worry about those things. I would be not too loose to say that that's a man. Mm. But when you want to make sure that the family has all of their physical and material needs met, making sure that food is in the refrigerator and the water comes on when you turn on the faucet, those are the things we get caught up with. 
And there's nothing wrong with praying about it. Especially when new power comes to turn it off and you don't have your money to pay the bill. Amen? It's all right. But here the emphasis on the spiritual. Sometimes we fail to address the deeper inner needs of the heart. Amen? Amen, lights. We're going to get there. Somebody knows what it is about the inner man. You know what the inner man ought to be. And when we get that inner man straight, the outer man is going to be okay. Amen? But some of us, we just, we're not even concerned about the inner man. Mm. This is where I wrestle. You worried about how you look? You worried about coordinating that dress with them shoes and your purse? That suit got to be right? That tie and handkerchief got to be straight? Mm. Sometimes we've got so uh, caught up in the church practices that we don't really focus on our soul salvation in that inner man. Let's go on into the text. Let's walk through it. When we start there at verse 14, Paul begins with the invocation, identifying who he's praying to, dealing with the relationship with God as a father in the family of believers. Amen? God the Father is the source of all creation. He's the rightful owner of everything. So God promises his love and his power to his family, which is the church. Not just right here at Mount Emmanuel. I'm talking about the body of believers. Amen. Yes, yes. All right. It's important to stay in contact and be connected with other believers. Yes. Yes. Mm, sometimes we want to do things on our own. Amen. Mm. All right. Iron sharp is iron. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get caught up in bedside baptist. You get disconnected. Amen. Right. So it's necessary that you come out to the house every in to receive a word. It may be that testimony from your brother or sister that may encourage you to stay connected. Sometimes we isolate ourselves and then we try to go at life all alone by ourselves. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, sometimes I need you. Turn to somebody close to you and tell them, I need you to survive. I need you and you need me. Yes, y'all know the song. We're all a part of God's body. Uh, stand with me and agree with me. Amen. Yeah. Disconnected. And then we even cut ourselves off from God's power. Yeah. Mm. As we look into the next couple verses there, and if we got any note takers, I'm going to throw some points and bullets out. So if you want to get your pen right on your program, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Amen. As we go into the next couple verses here, we see that Paul makes four requests in his prayer. Now we can't isolate each request as he goes through his individual petitions, but each one will lead into the next one. Amen. His prayer is that the inner man may be strengthened, which will lead to a deeper experience with Christ. The deeper experience will enable them to apprehend, that means to get a hold of God's great love. Amen. Which result in the believer being filled unto the fullness of God. So Paul prayed for strength, depth, apprehension, and fullness. For those of y'all that don't like to read, I just gave you the whole text right there in those four words. Amen. When we get to verse 16 and we look at strength, the presence of the Holy Spirit is going to be the evidence of your salvation. But the power of the Spirit is really our enablement for our Christian living. Yes. A lot of times we try to do things on our own and they don't always work out. Amen? Amen? Sometimes the Lord may have led us to do something and we'll throw our own twist in it and mess it up instead of being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The power of the Spirit is given to us according to the riches of His glory. Christ returned to glory and then He sent His Spirit from heaven to indwell in each of us and empower his people. How many of you know you have the Holy Spirit in you? Oh, right. uh, come on. I hope there's more people than that in here that's got the Holy Spirit in you. 
it shouldn't be necessary for us to try and work up some things. To try to build up the power if you possess it. Amen? <sighs> Let's look at this thing a little bit deeper. Mm. God doesn't give the Spirit's power out of his riches, but according to his riches, which is much better. Now, if you don't understand that, let me break this down for you in terms that you will understand. If I was a billionaire and I gave you $10, I can't do that out of my riches. But if I was to give you a million dollars, that was according to my riches because I was able to do much better than that. Because of the abundance of what I possess, I'm able to get you according to my riches. Mm. Some of you didn't even get that. There's a difference between portion and proportion. Amen. This is the power that's available to the inner man. This means that the spiritual part where God dwells and works the inner man of the lost sinner is dead. Mm. Here we go with the wrestle. But there's good news. It can come alive when Christ is invited in. Ah. So don't be deceived in thinking that just because you see people in church, amen? To think that their inner man is alive and doing well spiritually. Uh, there are some spiritually dead individuals that might be sitting in here right now that have mastered the appearance of doing what seems godly and what's right. Doing the practices of church rituals, yet being one of the biggest agents for the devil. Amen. Uh huh. Y'all don't have to say amen. Amen, like, I. Uh, don't get quiet on me now. There's people that's been appointed into positions that were never anointed to do so. Mm. You're appointed and thinking that your title is an indication that you you've arrived. <laughs> that you've obtained the favor of God just because you mastered earthly politics and was selected by man when you were never anointed by God. Mm. Okay. I'm going to let that stick for a second. I'm not talking about anyone here. Let me start. Let me go on and clarify. Because I don't want it to be a disconnect to think I'm calling somebody out. I'm not calling no names. I just know that being in kingdom, I've seen it occur. Yeah, it had happened here, mighty man, I'm sure. So y'all can say amen. <laughs> but the inner man can see, the inner man can hear, the inner man can taste, the inner man can feel. The inner man must be exercised. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. When we need to be strengthened, you got to go through some exercising. Yeah. Every now and then, the inner man must be cleansed and the inner man must be fed. Amen? Right. Yeah. Even when the outer man is perishing, if you see your body falling apart, you're dealing with ailments, the inner man still can be empowered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just means that our spiritual faculties are controlled by God. Amen? We're exercising them and then we're growing in the word. When we yield to the Holy Spirit, when we let him control our inner man, then we can succeed in living to the glory of God. Amen? This means that we have to feed the inner man. We have to feed the inner man with the word of God. We have to read our word. We have to be preached to. We have to be taught we have to come to Bible study. We have to do Sunday school. It's necessary to be fed. Come on, preacher. Praying and worshiping. Trying to keep clean. And exercising our senses. All this through our loving obedience. How many of you know that exercising don't always feel good? All right. 
Oh, come on. I know some folk. Y'all done exercised. Y'all done walked and walked and walked till you was out of breath. Amen. Muscle sore the next day. Woo! I'm talking about being pain. Can't hardly walk the next day. Amen. Uh, I remember an old slogan the U.S. Army used to have said that pain was weakness leaving the body. Amen. How many of you know that when you're working out and you're hurting, it's okay because you're getting stronger? He's building you for your purpose. When you're dealing with the trials in this life, you're getting stronger. He's building you up. Pain is weakness leaving your body. So when you're dealing with that hurtful situation, that pain that's got you all tore up, pain is weakness leaving your body. Huh. As we go on into verse 17, Paul uses three pictures here to convey his idea of spiritual death. Ah, there's three verbs that come out. And you just look when you're reading through that scripture there. The first one is dwell. The next one is rooted. And the third one is grounded. In the beginning of the letter to the Ephesians, Paul referred to an address them by saints. So Christ was already a resident in their hearts. All right. When I tell you that this word is not for everybody, if you have not accepted the Holy Spirit into your heart, you're not going to understand this text. That's right. Amen. Because you can't strengthen the inner man. The Holy Spirit cannot work until you've accepted the Holy Spirit into your life. So this is not for everybody. At this point, it's not too late. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not too late. Mm. Paul referred to addressing the saints. So Christ was already a resident in their hearts. I can be a guest at somebody else's house. And never feel like I'm at home. Any of y'all ever went to visit some relatives? You got in the bed and you just couldn't even sleep right. You tossed and turned all night long because you felt out of place. It could have been that lumpy old cheap mattress that they put on the guest bed. <laughs> but you don't feel home because your body is used to your mattress. You're used to what happens at your house. Paul was praying here for believers to have a deeper experience between Christ and his people. He didn't want you to have a surface relationship. Mm. All right, then. How many folk know some folk that have been in a surface relationship? Mm. He didn't want you to have a surface relationship. What he wanted you to have was a deepening fellowship. There is a difference. Amen. When looking at being rooted, we have to take it and relate it to the plant world. When we see plants and trees, they must have their roots deep in the soil to have both nourishment and stability. Christians must have their spiritual roots deep into the love of God so that we can be nourished and have some stability so that when the winds of this life blow, Ah, we won't waver and fall over. Hallelujah. Ah, I challenge you to ask yourself, from what do I draw my nourishment and stability? Yeah. Mm. If there's to be any power in our Christian life, we have to have some depth. Turn to somebody and say, are you deep? <laughs> our roots must go deeper into that love of Christ. Then we see grounded which is an architectural term referring to the foundations on which we build. The most important part of any building that you will have will be the foundation. Amen? All right. If you don't go deep, you can't go high. All right. All right. You can tweet that. <laughs> if you don't go deep, you can't go high. Amen? There's some word right there. That'll preach. That's a whole nother sermon right there. Trials of our life will test the depth of our foundation. Uh, let mama die. 
let daddy die. Let somebody who has been your foundation that you've held on to all your life leave all of a sudden unexpectedly. That's going to be the test of your foundation. Amen? Mm. Give you something else to reference. If you were living in a house and you were dealing with a roommate and y'all fell out and you part ways, most of you are not going to lose a wink of sleep. All right. But if I fall out with my wife or my husband, there's a deeper relationship that has a stronger root and love that is in the midst of that. All right. That thing is going to bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I would take more of an effort to work out my problems right. and try to address it than I would with my roommate. So when the storms blow, when the test comes, it's going to test the strength of your roots. Ask your neighbor, are you grounded? Next one is apprehension. When we look at the word to apprehend, we also look at the word comprehend. Both of them stem from the Latin word <laughs> Prehender, which means to grasp. Mm. When you look at monkeys, they got a prehensive tail that's able to wrap around and grab hold of limbs to where they can hang on. I know some of y'all wondering, okay, where are you going with this thing? <laughs> Comprehend means to mentally grasp something, while apprehend would suggest that you are laying hold of something yourself. I talked about being in law enforcement. When it goes to me to apprehend somebody, I got to lay hands on that individual and hold on to them to take them to that destination. <clears throat> so you got to lay hold to something for yourself. In other words, we can understand something, but we don't quite make it our own. Hmm. A lot of us understand how God wants us to live. All right. Amen. But we won't hold to the standard and the morals of what we're supposed to do. Amen. Our Christian ethics just kind of go out the window when it's something we want to do. It don't mean that we don't understand it. Amen. It's just not what we want to lay hold to. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen, lights. <laughs> I don't expect y'all to shout off this one. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't even expect it. But if you're thinking, the power in the word is going to be that it's going to prick your heart and your mind to make you think about how you're doing something or what you're doing. And hopefully you're going to walk out of here different from the way you came. Because when you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, it will convict you and grab you and make you think about that thing to make you want to do different. Hmm. We don't have to worry about as Christians when we're holding on to the Holy Spirit and the life that he wants us to live. We don't have to worry about having inadequate spiritual resources because we have an endless amount. When we pray for strength and when we pray for death, mm, then we can get our hands on God's grace and love. Yeah, yeah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't have to worry about being inadequate and not being able to do something because what God has for me, it is for me. And then we get to the end in there where it talks about the fullness of the Holy Spirit. All right. Ah, anybody ever just been full? Yeah. Or oh, come on in this house. I said, has anybody in here ever been full? Yeah. If not, we need to have a feeling to take place. Amen. If you are in doubt or if you have question about where you stand in any of this, there's a necessary step that must first take place. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do I have any believers in here today? that believe that God did that thing just for you and me? Do I have any believers in here that know that God 
gave the precious lamb. Ah, just for you and me? I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. I know that I believe that the Son of God was born of a virgin. Ah, yes, I believe that he was born in a manger. Even though he was the King of kings and the Lord of lords, I believe that he walked on this earth. People didn't acknowledge who he was. Some did. But the majority did not. I believe that he healed the sick. Do I have any other believers in here today? How many of you know that he's still able to heal the sick in here today? Ah, I know he was able to feed the hungry. I know that he was able to even raise the dead. Huh. I believe that my Jesus was captured. He was beaten and he was bruised for my iniquities. Anybody else in here know that he was beaten for you? I mean, you know that by his stripes we're healed. I believe that he walked up no God. I believe that they nailed my Jesus in his hands. Anybody else in here believe that today? Come on, that's the first step to making sure that inner man is correct. Not only do I believe that, but they nailed him in his feet. They pierced his side. He shed his blood for you and me. Come on, I know I got one or two more believers in here. They know that my Jesus got on that cross. He hung his head. My Jesus died on that cross. For a sinner like you and me. They placed my Jesus in between two thieves. They didn't recognize who he was. After he hung his head and died, they placed my Jesus in a borrowed tomb. They placed my Jesus in that tomb. 